we're just gonna move on because that book literally pisses me off when i look at it it gets me so mad because i highly anticipated that book everyone hyped it up for me and it was a dud it was a fucking dud this is my favorite book of all time did you hear that do you need me to say it again do you need me to say it okay welcome to my channel if you're new to my channel my name is cassie i make videos about literally everything but lately has been book centered like this video so i'm a little late because it is june 13th and i'm barely recording this so it's probably not going to come up till mid june but it's okay better late than never okay and i love filming these i've just been really busy so that's always my excuse but here we go i love to record these i know i do keep a good read so it's like i can i can um which we'll call it look back and see like what books i read and when i read them but it's nothing like you know sitting down chit chatting about your favorite books of that month and also the ones that you didn't really enjoy that month um but yeah let's get into it today we're gonna be did i say what we're doing <laughs> today i am filming my i'm gonna share with you guys my may reads may 2022 reads all the books that i read in may oh my god self-explanatory um i read a total of 11 books this month or this past month that is my highest record of books that i read i don't know I think coming from a slump, I think I was, wasn't I in a slump? Was it a March? It was April. I don't even remember, but I know that I had recently been in a slump where I just like wasn't really motivated to read and I kind of like just didn't find anything to the point where I literally DNF'd a book, um, which is not on my list. I need to bring that one up. Um, but let's just get into it because honestly like i don't i don't know i i, I can ramble let's get into it okay so we're gonna start with the first book that i attempted to read this month and i actually dnf'd if you don't know what dnf'd it means did not finish because i just i could not for the love of me like get into this book and i was very upset because i um was really looking forward to this book and I'm just going to set it aside for the future. Hopefully, later down the line, I can get back into it. But it just wasn't for me at that moment. So the book in question is Emergency Contact. I'll put it up here. I do have a physical book, but it's in my room. And I really I don't feel like going to get it. Um, but yeah, so this book, honestly, I couldn't even tell you what it's about. What I remember is that... Um, there's this girl who's like dealing with like like a lot of like issues, like mental issues, I think. Or I honestly don't know. I just know she meet this guy. It's a not so me cute situation because he was like in a shitty ass situation. He has a lot going on. And they get their each other's number and are like just like texting all the time. And that's like the extent of their relationship. I'm assuming until the end of the book. Regardless, I just could not, the writing, the way this book was written, and I just feel like, I don't know, I just, I was not vibing. I was not vibing and that's all I have to say. Like, not, no shade to this book at all. I was very excited for it and I just was not vibing with it. Um, so there's a land. I, you know what? It was very immature. Like, it felt immature and it's like, I could read YA books all day every day. I love me a YA young adult book, but... Not when it's written so cheesy and corny, you know? When it has like these like little phrases. I can look past certain ones, but to an extent, it's like, I'm just not, I'm not vibing. That's the answer to that. I'm just not vibing. But the next book I read was Psycho. Um, it's a it's book two, I believe. Yeah. Book two in the Necessary Evils um series by Anna Lee James. Um, I gave that three stars. I seem that seems to be the like general consensus for these books that i read um i read the first one last month i gave it three stars i read the second one this um may and then i just finished actually the third one so that seems to be the general consensus for these books because they they have plot and it's just like very 
not real. <laughs> That's why it's called fiction. But it's like super like this, the odds of this happening is like very slim to none. So it kind of, you know, it's a good escapism. It's a good thing to like bounce off of if you like came from something like really heavy and you want to read something a little bit lighter, a little more of an escape. This is the book for you because basically I've explained it last month, but it's basically, you know, Dexter, um, but make it gay. So yeah, it's pretty awesome. I mean, I like them. I enjoy them. Like I said, I think they're really good escapisms. Um, and I, that's why I read is to escape my reality. Um, but yeah, so that one was three stars. I really enjoyed it. And I really, I would recommend if you like MM romance and spice, I would 100% recommend these. And every single one has a happy ending, meaning it's not going to leave you on a cliffhanger. It's always going to conclude the story in one, um, in one book so like each book is there's seven brothers i don't know if i ever explained this there's seven brothers or six brothers and each book goes towards every single brother and they're all gay and amazing okay i fucking love it um yeah so if you're into that i would highly recommend it it's on kindle unlimited so you can read it with your subscription to kindle unlimited um and yeah I would highly recommend them. Um, the next book I read was Twisted Love by Anna Huang, and I gave that one four stars. I loved this book. You know, it feels like so long ago that I read this book, but literally it was just last month. Um, I loved this book. It was honestly very, very good. So this is basically a best friend's, best friend's, or brother's best friend. So for him, it's his best friend's sister, and it is so good because we have Alex Volkel who is a very grumpy like keep to himself quiet kind of guy and then you have what was the love interest name Ava Ava Chen she was very um like happy sunshine so it's like grumpy sunshine brother's uh yeah brother's best friend and basically the brother was like on a mission trip to I forget what country it's a third world country but he's basically like um practicing medicine out there at a clinic or something like that but he was obviously leaving and their mother had passed away when they were younger and their dad they don't really have a relationship with him so they they're or they're not really that close so they're kind of like all they got so when he left he's like i want you to watch my sister like just make sure that you know she's straight nothing bad happens if she needs you she needs an emergency i'm usually the one she calls but i you know hope that you as my best friend can be there for her and yeah that's pretty much the premise there's more like plot to it and at the end of the book there is groveling um because you know there always has to be the second act breakup and then i've never had groveling this much it's the first time this first book i ever read that had this much groveling so i feel like it was a good experience i'm just saying like women we give in too easy to this man we need to make them beg for it a little bit more and this man now this man if he's not begging like this man did he don't want it he don't want it it was really good alex seemed hot as fuck and yeah it was just really good chemistry honestly i loved it when i read it but i cannot for the life of me tell you right now like what it's about like you know i i like forgot about it because i've read so many books after that that's like Anyways, okay, I read that on Kindle, Kindle Unlimited as well. It is a series. I believe there's a total of four books. She just released the last one. Um, and it's basically a relationship of the best friends of Ava and all her friends. Um, so yeah, I'm excited to keep reading them. So anyways, that was that one and it was good. Four stars. So the next one that I read was A Not So Me Cute by Megan Quinn. I gave this book five stars and I just learned that she released the second like it's like a kind of like um it happened one summer how it was like Piper and her sister I forgot her sister's name I don't know anyways it's literally irrelevant <laughs> I read a not so me cute by Megan Quinn and this is basically kind of similar in the sense where it's two sisters but we had the main character that I can't even remember. Lottie, Lottie, yeah, her her name was Lottie. What was his name? See, this is why I need to like write things down. 
because I literally forget everything. So it takes place with Lottie and Huxley and basically not Lottie is like in a very rough place right now with her career and like she kind of got fucked over by somebody that she thought was like truly her friend and um Huxley got himself in a situation that he is in need of a fake wife with who's pregnant okay not only does he need a fake wife but he needs a pregnant one so he got himself in kind of like a shitty situation so they're both kind of like in need of somebody and in her hunt to <laughs> to find a sugar daddy <laughs> she was just joking it was just one of those like desperate measures you know type of vibes and she runs into huxley and it was basically like i guess meant to be because they needed each other for exactly the same reasons and yeah that's pretty much it it's very their journey of like fake marriage fake pregnancy having to like literally fake it and go to like lamaze classes and things like that with a certain person that he's trying to impress and it was good the angst was good it was a slow burn because they don't hook up for a while and then there's a moment where it's like he is just so ugh, in control and hot like this book was so good the whole time i was reading it, i was like smiling like a dumbass but i loved it i loved every fucking moment i read it on my kindle again all these books are kindle unlimited i would not pay for a kindle book i'm just not i pay for my subscription and that's it but these are all f not free, but considered under your membership. So you can read as many as you want. Anyways, um, yeah, it was so good. And the um, the spinoff or like the second book, I guess, it takes place with her sister who in the first book, they were setting it up to like start her romance with someone who was interested in her. So I would definitely uh, like suggest to read these books first. Um, the first book first just because like it just makes that much more enjoyable like you get to know the character from the beginning rather than starting in the middle you know and it, it just makes the relationship like that much more makes sense um but it was so good the banter between them hilarious like fucking hilarious i loved it megan quinn this is my first megan quinn book but i will continue to read her books because i thoroughly enjoyed her writing like it was really really good and i ate this book up this book was like what how many pages 404 pages and I think I read it in like two days two days yeah I was obsessed with it like obsessed and her new one is not so so not meant to be um but like I said it takes place with her sister so yeah that one was good five stars highly recommend it the next book that I read I read it actually um I listened to an odd an audio and it was Neon Gods by Katie Robert I did give this one three stars um I notice that I give books that I read, listen in audio, way less of a rating than I do books that I actually physically read because I kind of don't pay attention sometimes and I miss information and I have to like go back and then sometimes I'm just like, fuck it, I just miss some information. But basically this book is uh, Hades and Persephone's retelling. Um, Persephone's is kind of like put in a situation where she is being pretty much forced to marry um zeus but he's like this sleazy disgusting piece of shit it's like modernized greek mythology so he's like this disgusting piece of shit and every woman he's ever married has magically passed away somehow some way so she's like i'm next and i don't want that to do i don't want that to happen to me um but her mother diomedes is actually forcing her to i think her mother's diomedes i'm pretty sure um i could make that up but her mother is basically forcing her to marry zeus because they have like this inner circle of like eight fucking i don't i don't remember what it was but whatever so she crosses the bridge to the underworld and once she crossed the bridge they can't do anything because that is hades um territory and she didn't know hades even existed they make it seem in the upper world they make it seem like hades had passed away and all this shit has happened but hades actually been living in the underworld and she had no idea and he basically runs the underworld and yeah it's pretty much their relationship he um fucking hates zeus and wants to take him down so he's like you're his wife to be perfect like we should have a plan and they both hatched a plan to pretend 
to like be together so that he can it could be like a big fuck you to zeus like i stole your bitch honestly just a fucking smut at this point it's very sexy i would give it four spice spices four spice level um out of five it's just very sexy it's very you know detailed and if you don't like that i wouldn't read it but i just recently bought the second book which is electric idol and i'm excited to read that one so yeah three stars for that one the next book was my first physical book of the month and it was actually a poetry book and it is the sun and her flowers by rupee Carr. um i believe in february i read milk and honey and loved it and i just read this one and it was good i gave it um three stars it wasn't as good as Milk and Honey. I really loved Milk and Honey more, maybe because I felt like I could relate to it. But honestly, her, her poetry, I always feel like I can relate to it. There was a lot of good things here. And like, I, you know, highlighted and wrote on some of the stuff too, because I was just like, yes, bitch. A lot of the stuff I just resonated with and a lot of it, I did it, which is fine, you know, but it, I take it as it is, you know, it was a really beautiful book. Um, poetry book and I did enjoy the context of it it's basically broken like all her other um or like milk and honey is it's broken into four sections so you have wilting falling rooting rising and blooming and it's almost like a pattern of like deteriorating and then um finding some healing and then repairing yourself almost that's kind of like the vibe I get but it, it was really good I think um if you're into poetry and you like her other stuff, you will enjoy this book too. Uh, I got it as a gift, I'm pretty sure. I don't think I bought it because I'm not really into poetry books um, like that. Like I don't, they don't intrigue me, but I've been having this on my shelf for a very long time and I still haven't read it. So I'm like, get to it, get to it. And these are fast to read, you know? So I don't know why I did that. That was very ugly. <laughs> Okay, I'm done with myself. Some of these next books that I read, I actually read them for a video that should be coming out soon, hopefully in like a week or two, but I've been working really hard on it. It's been like a month or a month and a half that I've been like working on it, obviously since May. Um, but um, it is TikTok viral book, reading TikTok viral books. So this is part of them. So I'm not gonna go too much into depth because you'll get my... A, like original like off the bat thoughts right then and there um but i will just you know tell you the synopsis and kind of like give you my star rating just really quick let's rapid fire these bitches because we've been filming for 20 minutes and we're barely halfway through <laughs> so the next book i read was reminders of him by colleen hoover this is um what if this is her newest release i read it in my kindle it was on kindle unlimited and it was free audio so i listened to a little bit of audio but i mostly read the book myself um and i gave this four stars four stars so good i love colleen hoover so before this book the only other book that i read was it ends with us and i loved that book like so good so i'm like you know going in here hopeful wishful thinking the thing with with colleen hoover is she's gonna give you romance she's gonna give you a little bit of spice like about maybe a one chili a two chili spice but she's gonna give you plot as well and she's gonna give you twisty twisty turnies but this one didn't really have like a twist and a turn it kind of like you kind of expected it from the beginning the turn but it wasn't like anything crazy but i still enjoyed it so much like it was sad and it was just a very good book um why am i telling you my thoughts and i literally said that you can hear my thoughts on the other one i, I hate myself but anyways it follows ledger and kenna and um uh, basically kenna just got released from jail for something she did five years ago when she went to jail she found out she was pregnant she didn't know before she was in jail so she gave birth and she lost custody of her child so her custody's the child is currently with her grand with her grandparents and now she's back five years later um and she wants to find her daughter and have a relationship with her and she meets a ledger um her first night back in town it is a very good book and if i was a mother i think i would have cried but i think that colleen hoover did a good job with putting you in the eyes and the perspective of both parties of the party of the person who had been taking care of her child for five years and of the mother who literally you know didn't have 
the access to her child because she was in jail. So it was really good. I loved it. Four stars, hands down. Very good. I highly recommend you read it. The next book I read, I was not happy. The Love Hypothesis by Allie Hazelwood. I feel like this is an unpopular opinion. I gave this two stars. I just did not vibe with this book. It was good until it wasn't. You know, it was kind of that vibe. Like, it was good until it wasn't. I just was not impressed with the romance side of, the, of this book. And I did not like Adam. Like, I did not like the guy. Um, but basically, this takes place with Adam and Ollie. Where right? that's her name? Or am I getting? Olive. Too many bitches I'd be reading about. <laughs> Adam and Olive, and they're both um scientist okay they both in stem he is a professor she in stanford university she is a grad student not his grad student but nonetheless a grad student her there's a situation with her friend who wants to date her ex she was never into her ex it was kind of like a short little fling she sees that her friends and her ex really get along so she's like go ahead and date him but she's like no i don't want to do that to you like i'm not going to date your ex because that makes things awkward it's girl code blah 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 so she tries to make her see like, hey, I have my own life. I'm dating. Like, I'm going on a date today. Please don't worry about me. You can date my ex. And then she runs into her friend, no lying that she wasn't on a date. She was actually at school, like working on a project. And she grabs the nearest guy and kisses him. Literally this. And it was Adam Carlson. Um, Yeah, and that's pretty much it. There's nothing else going on in this book. There's no plot, there is a conflict, and I hate the resolution, I hate the way they went, I just did not like it. Two stars, that's it. I, unpopular opinion, I don't know what you guys see in this book. I don't, and that's fine. Uh, we, can, we can disagree, or we can agree to disagree, because no. On to the next. The next book I read is, oh no. <laughs> I read The Hate You Give by Angie Thomas. So yes, this is The Hate You Give by Angie Thomas. This is actually um, a collector's edition. And I actually found this at a thrift store. So I'm very excited that I did. And I love this book. This is a young adult um, contemporary. I think that's what it's called, right? Contemporary? I don't know. But <laughs> basically, it takes place with Star. She is the main person, the main perspective that we're getting. And Star is a um young teenage i think she was like 17 years old but she um lives in like the ghetto i guess I, I hate to say that but like a more like underprivileged area but she does go to a private school because her parents are like no we don't want you to be you know fall into this shit because her parents come from this place they know what it is her dad used to be a gang member her mom I don't know. Her mom probably just, you know, lived this life. But they don't want her, her brothers and sisters, to go through the same thing they went through. So they kind of take them from the prep, the public school. They go to a private school, like, in a town, like, down the street or whatever. Or, you know, an hour away or whatever. Not the point. Not the point. Um, But she still lives in this area. I don't even remember what the area was called. It just says she moves between two worlds. A poor black neighborhood and a, a prep school in the suburbs so that's where she goes but she lives in this like very poor the um poor neighborhood and she basically goes to a party because she still has friends in this neighborhood because she grew up in this neighborhood she did go to public school once upon a time until something happened with her parents and they're like you know no we're going to private school anyways she goes to this party and she sees her like childhood friend who she used to have a crush with his name was khalil and um something a fight breaks out or something at the party gunshots and they run away like run out of the party she goes in his car and he's like i'm gonna take you home like you know let's not worry about it well on the way home he gets pulled over by a cop and the cop ends up shooting him he was unarmed and he wasn't doing anything wrong was he being a little um what's it called uncooperative maybe or a little giving a little attitude maybe but i don't see why that had happened that had to happen but it did and it basically talks about all the injustice with police and 
minorities, people of color. And it has great conversation of like, she was put in the position of watching her best friend die. And it's basically seeing her mourn and how she's going to turn something so tragic into something uplifting and, you know, make a movement out of it and let not his death be in vain. Because what, of course, they always do is try to look at the negative and when you know reporters and people found out that he died they start oh but he was a drug dealer oh but he was a gangbanger so that's okay for you to kill them because they do or they're drug dealers or gangbangers no no one's life is that disposable unless you're a serial killer then your life is but you know it's just really good conversations and i feel like the journey it took us from like the beginning of like when it happened, when the reports came out, when she had to testify, and they still did not um, find the cop guilty. And he was still got to keep his job while this young man, you know, who had a whole life ahead of him and just was basically doing what he had to do. It was very sad. And to know the meaning of like what this, it literally says thug, but it's thug life. And it says, the hate you give, I have to read it. The hate you give little infants fucks everybody. So basically, the way I took that off of, and the way they kind of explain it in the book is basically like, the way we bring up our little kids is what they're gonna become in the future, and that fucks everybody. Because they're being raised in a very like poor, impoverished um, environment who people just are doing what they gotta do to survive. If you've never been in that position, you will never know, you know, what it's like to not know where your next meal is going to come from or things like that so people just do what they got to do because they feel like this is how i'm going to survive what do you expect you know people in low impoverished environments to do if all we're feeding them is negativity so i loved this book it was really good the next book i read was the un <laughs> the unhoneymooners by christina lord and it's this book right here. And I gave this one five stars. You want to know my thoughts, go to my TikTok video on YouTube. My YouTube video on TikTok books. <laughs> but this is a five star. Oh my God. So effing good. I highly, highly recommend this book. First of all, it takes place in Maui. That's all I have to say. I love Hawaii so much that like, Anything take place in Maui, mm, sign me up, take me there. I want to go there. Um, but basically, it is Ethan and Ollie. Olive! Why do I want to say Ollie? I think they call her Ollie. Olive. <laughs> Olive is my favorite, my favorite um, protagonist because she is like um, Latina. Uh, has curves has a body like they explain her perfectly to like make you <clears throat> picture a real like not like your typical skinny nothing there's nothing wrong with being skinny but i'm i feel like there's a lot more representation of like this form fit flat tummy body than there is of a like a plus size good size woman and this was amazing representation on a mid-sized woman i loved it so much and <clears throat> So you have Olive, Olive and Ethan, and they go, they are the best man and the maid of honor for her brother and her sister and their wedding. So everyone gets sick at her wedding because everyone ate the food, but Olive is actually allergic to the seafood that they ate. So she didn't have none. And Ethan refuses to eat buffet style food because he's a germaphobe. So they're the only two that don't get sick. Everyone else gets sick. So her sister's like, go on the honeymoon for me like go have fun because or else it's going to be wasted i'd rather you enjoy your time which honestly what a fucking nice sister and the brothers does the same to ethan so they are forced to go on the honeymoon together and pretend to be husband and wife and oh my god oh my god i love them like i absolutely love them so when the second act breakup happened i was so mad because i'm like no why are you taking me out of like this, 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 this. But it was a great exploration of like, Olive was kind of going through some shit, um, trying to find her path in like 
a career and things like that um and she was really struggling so it was nice to see kind of like her journey to like i don't have my shit together i'm 20 something years old i don't even know how old she is she's like 20 i want to say she's like 25 i'm like 25 years you know years old i don't have my shit together like i'm a loser and blah blah and it's like no who said you have to get have your shit together at 25 i'm 29 and i don't have my shit together so you know maybe we never have our shit together but i think that that it was a nice like little reminder that you can be fucking 37 years old and not have your shit together there's no time limit to have your shit together and you know what sometimes you got to take yourself out of what you think you want and actually find what you really want. And it was a really good book. Like, I fucking loved it. I would recommend it to everyone. Read it. You'll love it. You'll like it. It'll take you away from your reality and take you to fucking Maui. Who wouldn't like that? We're coming down to the wire. So the next book that I read was Brutal Prince by Sophie Lark. I gave that four stars. So good. So good. I read this on my Kindle. And this is actually a series. I think there's like seven books. Probably more than that. I don't know. But um basically it's a mafia romance so it's like the irish and the italians i'm pretty sure and we have who is the main guy and who is the girl calum is part of the irish and then ada is part of the italian ada she is a no shit type of bitch like she is taking no shit from fucking nobody and calum is like this grumpy like all about his workaholic, all about his business type of guy. And they are actually forced to get married because of something that Ada did. And basically this is kind of their truce of their family. Um, so they're forced to get married. And yeah, it's basically forced proximity because she has to move in with him. And they hate each other. They literally hate each other. She tries to fucking kill him multiple times. He has put his hands on her like, it's toxic, but it's amazing because when they finally like accept it, oh my God, he is the epitome of like, no, if anybody fucks with you, if anybody talks to you bad, if anybody disrespects you, if anybody lays a finger on you, I will murder them. Very protective, very like, she's my wife. I don't care if we're not in love because obviously it was a arranged marriage. Like, I protect what's mine and like baby it was so good it was so good he is so good she is so good i loved it sophie lark this is my first sophie lark book and i will continue to read the series i'm gonna finish it all and i actually want the physical books that's how much i loved it i think i'm gonna get this physical books because i did write it read on my kindle four stars amazing and now we save the best for last you guys okay we save the best for last for last, this is my favorite book of all time. Did you hear that? Do you need me to say it again? Do you need me to say it? Okay. This is my favorite book of all time. I mean, all time. All time. November 9, Colleen Hoover. November 9, Colleen Hoover. Have you read this? Have you read this? Because if you haven't, literally stop what you're doing. Go on fucking Amazon. Go to Barnes & Noble. Go to fucking Half Price Books. Go to your library. Get this motherfucking book and read it, please. Get on Kindle. I think, I think it's on Kindle Unlimited. Don't quote me. What to say? Five stars, first of all. Duh. If I'm loving it this much. Five fucking stars. My favorite book of all time, but also my favorite Colleen Hoover book. It literally trumps all of them. This book is so good. It's so hard to explain. And the twist fucked me up. And the ending, I literally fucking bawled my eyes out. Let me tell you what it's about. Let me tell you. Take a seat. You're going to love this. So this takes place with Fallon and Ben. I don't want to give anything away because literally everything's amazing. If you just go into this not knowing an absolutely a thing, amazing. Absolutely because I did not expect it. I did not expect it. And then the twist comes. And every year is always something. But it is. So the twist. The twist. The fucking twist. And then the ending. The manuscript. 
I was sobbing at like five in the morning because I woke up early and I'm like, I need to finish this book. I had like maybe 20% left. And I was sobbing in my fucking bed like if somebody murdered my child. I don't have a child, but if I had a child, this is how I would be crying if they murdered him. Okay, that's kind of dark. Why the fuck did I say that? Anyways, I was sobbing so hard because of this book. But it was so good. Okay, so I had... <laughs> I think that I need to limit to seven books. <laughs> to seven books a month because... I mean, yeah, a month because I'd be going crazy when I'd be reading more than more than seven books. Anyways, this was my last book and it was the best book and I highly recommend you read it. It was five stars. I will read this again just so I can annotate it and highlight my favorite parts because there were so many things that Ben is just the man. Like Ben is the epitome of like what I want a man to do to me, to be to me. If I was single, obviously I'm in a relationship. Okay, I'm more than a really, I'm married. But obviously, you know, that's not the case. But I'm just saying, if I was young, just like Fallon was, if I was young and impressionable and like wasn't in love yet, this is who I want to make me fall in love. Someone like Ben. So good. Highly recommend. And that is it. That is everything I read in June. And we're glad. It was a good month. It was a good month. It was a good reading month. Uh, yeah, that's everything that I read in May. I hope you guys enjoyed that. Um, I rambled a lot. And if I gave any spoilers away, I will make sure to cut them out. Um, but yeah, that's it. I think we made it to the end. Thank you for sticking around. Thank you for um, listening to me ramble. And yeah, look out for my next video. It's going to be the TikTok video because why the fuck not? Um, and... That's all I have to say. There's nothing else. Subscribe to my channel if you're not already subscribed. Why do I always point up here? Literally, it's like down here, I think, or down here. Subscribe if you're already not because I post content once a week, once a week. We don't know what day. We haven't felt out the days yet, but at least once a week. So stay tuned for that. Um, and make sure to give this a thumbs up if you guys enjoy wrap-ups, monthly wrap-ups. Because I honestly love doing them. They're like my favorite thing to do. Um, and yeah, that is going to be all. Comment down below if you guys loved any of these books. Or if you hated any of these books. I would love to have a conversation about books. But thank you so much for watching. And I will see you guys in my next one. Bye.